Welcome to another video from Lessons in Logic. In this video we're going to take a deep dive into the Rating V module of CGMBET. We've covered this module in an earlier video when we looked at different ways of getting value with CGMBET. The link to this video is in the description below. Rating V is often talked about but do you know how to push it to the limit and, and if you'll excuse the pun get the best value out of it. If you would like to purchase CGMBET you can now do so from our own link. This will get you 25% off the current price. Just go to the link on the screen and also in the description of this video to make your purchase and join many other users of this excellent betting and trading tool. So firstly before we dive into the module we'll take a quick look around the interface. In the top right we've got the range of days in which to evaluate the fixtures. Um, it defaults to the current day but obviously you can change that to anything that suits your needs. And we can also evaluate the data over a number of seasons here. And you can change that again to your specific needs. And we can change what the software is showing us, whether it's the over and unders market, the match market, or the both teams to score, or both teams not to score market. And we can show things like the correct score, the ELO differences, and we can specify what those are and we can look at the calculated odds and we can just select value games which we'll do once we start getting into the nitty gritty of the module and we can also filter on odds and we can also decide here what we're going to highlight and between what ranges which, which again we'll see that once we start playing with the module and once we've got the data up then we can use this section down at the bottom here so what we're going to do is we're going to look over the next three days. It's a Friday when we're recording this video. So this should give us all of the weekend's fixtures. And we're going to take the data from the last three seasons. And we're going to look at the full time data. We'll take the home and away markets. And we're going to look at the English leagues just to keep the games down. And we'll click refresh. And that will bring in all the games over the uh, forthcoming weekend or the last three days uh, there we are so you can see there's a lot there and there's a lot going on on this screen so what we're going to do initially is we're going to click value games and that has significantly reduced the list of what we're seeing here just down to games where the software has found value in the odds so as per the Betfair colours the, the bluey colour is a back bet and the pinky colour would be for a lay bet. So just to take you through what these mean, so Plymouth versus Luton, which is being played this evening. So the software has worked out based on the uh, last three seasons with the data that Plymouth have a 36% chance of winning, uh, which equates to odds of 2.75. And the bookmaker, which in my case is Bet365, is offering odds, odds of just over four for Plymouth so it's seen that as a good opportunity for a back bet it's not saying that the results going to happen and conversely the odds for for Luton um, they've got a 36% chance of winning a game based on the data which is uh, odds of 2.72 and the bookmakers only offering 1.87 so that is saying that it's an opportunity for a lay bet and what we can do here is we can evaluate the ELO ratings of those teams so we can actually see that Luton are in terms of ELO rating the stronger of the two teams here and if we move over a little bit further we can see some more data on this fixture so, so we can see here that Plymouth tend to score 1.23 at home and Luton score 1.276 away from home and Plymouth concede one and a half goals on average at home whereas Luton tend to concede just over a goal a game and we can see stats here on the both teams to score for the home and for the away teams and the both teams not to score and also how many goals the home team scores typically in games so one goal for Plymouth at home is the highest there and for Luton away from home so third of the time they don't score. This is based all upon data within the championship. So the fact that they struggled in the Premier League last year won't get taken into account for this data. And you can see the breakdown of their goals there. 
So that gives a quick overview of each of these games. And what we need to do now is we need to analyze them in more detail to see whether it is worth getting on these odds or not. So what we can do is we can send the current game to advanced goal statistics. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna change this up to the 22, 23 season up to the current date. And we'll click calculate on that. So what this gives us here is this gives us all the um, odds of the um, championship games within that period. So you see the home team does win more often than not, but um, we can see that the odds range here is for every, every single game. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that with the home win odds brought in for Plymouth. And we can see again that out of the 54 games, the home team actually only won 14. Um, we had odds of 3.86. Now, if you remember, the odds for Plymouth to win were just over four. And there is a positive yield on this. So that's kind of why this game has been identified as being value for the home team. And what we can also do is we can bring in just Plymouth's home games within the odds filter. And we can see when Plymouth have been at home with any odds range here, that they've won 11 out of their 26 games. Um, just under half of them and again if we introduce the odds filter and recalculate that then Plymouth have only had three games at home where they've been between those odds uh, and they've won one, drawn one and won away win. It's a game which does have possibilities I mean Plymouth don't get um, heavily beaten uh, when they're at home with these odds and that goes in our favour. What we can also do is we can look how Luton perform away from home so first of all we'll just look at Luton away from home in the championship in that time bearing in mind that there's going to be a season where they were in the Premier League so we can see again they win 43% of their away games in the championship in that period and if we bring in the away odds so they're in that range they draw three and win one which again is kind of good for us if we're looking at the the value so going back to here we can see that there are odds of 187 at the bookmakers to win whereas in the last uh, from 2022-23 up to now then they've only won one of the four games where they've been in this odds range away from home so that's potentially a game that the home team odds um, are probably not good enough for us to get on but laying the away team um, is quite kind of where the value is I think in this fixture so what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these checking every game then we will have a list of fixtures where we think there's value I mean straight away looking at Wolves versus Liverpool I mean Liverpool are a very short price at 137 there uh, but Wolves are too high really at 776 so it, or so it would seem let's have a look at this one and see if our beliefs are true so straight away here we've got um, the Premier League and we'll change the dates on that to be 22, 23 up until now and we've changed the, the odds for the home team so straight away we can see that out of the 10 games where the home team have been between the odds which Wolves are um, the, the away team is the um, by far the, uh, the favourite to win this game which is kind of what we would have expected um, if we change that to the away odds, then again, Liverpool were 137 with the bookmakers and they're 136 based on this data. So that's looking quite efficient. Um, if we bring in the teams, just to confirm, so if we have Wolves at home, then they win 41% of their games in total. Uh, but at these odds, then they've never been at these odds previously, so we've got no data to back that up with. And if we look for Liverpool away from home, then they win just over half their games. And again, if we put in the away odds, then again, they're just over half. But their odds now for the away win is at 1.85 when they're in between this range. There could be some value there if you was to lay them at 137. And you could take some ticks out of the market and um, maybe back them or cash out Um at nil nil after a defined time period or if you're even luckier if Wolves took the lead um, certainly wouldn't be staying in for the whole game uh, I don't think expecting Liverpool not to win 
there's certainly some value in, in laying them at the odds that they are with the bookmaker, which I say is 1.37 at the time of recording. So the process that we've just shown, we've, we've gone through that for all of these games and I've picked out some which um, the odds were the most favourable to actually get involved with. The other ones were a little bit closer. We will record them uh, after the event just to see how they've got on. But uh, if I was putting my virtual pound on, which I'm not putting any money on these, just to be clear, uh, these are the selections that I would have gone for. So what we'll do is we'll come back at the end of the weekend after these games have been played and we'll see how well we've done. I'd be surprised if we get too many winners, but uh, you never know. So let's come back in a few days time and see what results we get. So welcome back to the video. It's now Sunday night and all of the games of the weekend are now complete. So we can look through the games which uh, CGM Bet told us that there's be value in the odds and see how we've got on. So if you remember, uh, I selected certain games which I thought were more suitable than the other ones. And we can look in Excel as I've been logging these. So Plymouth versus Luton and we said we would lay the away team and the odds of 1.87 for Luton who lost 3-1 so if we were sticking our pound on then we would have made that pound as a profit uh, Blackburn versus QPR we were backing the away team uh, they lost 2-0 and I believe had a player sent off as well so that one was never really going to come in so we'd have lost our pound stake on that one uh, Harrogate versus Bradford uh, Bradford were 188 away from home um, but lost the game 2-1 so we would have made our pound profit on that one um, Morecambe versus Notts County which was bottom versus top um, we went for the glamorous back in the home team at odds of 3.88 uh, remember these are CGM bet odds um, at the time when we filmed and the score was 1-1 so we were a little bit unlucky in that one uh, it's a pound loss but um, bottom versus top we were close the home team actually did take the lead in that game and same with York versus Eastleigh we have backed the away team here with York being the strong favourites uh, Eastleigh's odds at 488 and the score there was also 1-1 so even though it was a loss um, we came close the home team didn't win when they were heavy favourites and also Wolves Liverpool now we never expected Wolves to win this one uh, we laid the away team at 137 and the score was actually close with Wolves equalising uh, to 2-1. So overall it would have been £1.37 down from our £6 stakes. Now if we have taken every game which CGM Bet gave us uh, and backed the selections, then you can see we'd have had a win at Plymouth, uh, a win at Harrogate and a win at Newport. But everything else would have lost so it would have been £9.74 down on all these back bets. And if we'd have laid everything, which CGM better given us as a lay, we'd have actually made a £2.57 profit, which admittedly is not a great deal for 20 odd games. Um, but um, we never actually expected to make anything out of these. But it just to show that with a bit of research, then we could potentially have turned these into a profitable strategy. The beauty of trading though is that you don't need to stay in for the entire game, which we have all of these results. If we bring up flash scores for the Liverpool game, then we can see that Liverpool didn't actually take the lead until the second minute of injury time. Now, at 40 minutes in this game, the odds on Liverpool winning were 1.74 on Betfair, and the starting odds on Betfair were 136. So, if you'd have traded out at 40 minutes, then you'd have 38 ticks worth of profit, which would be the way that I would trade these games where you've got a strong away favourite. You would hope that they wouldn't take an early lead, and you would trade out at a point where you were happy with the profit, um, the ideal situation would have been the home team taking the lead in this situation for an even bigger profit. But I would have liked to have thought that if I was trading this game properly, I would have been out well before the 45th minute, based purely on Liverpool's superiority in the odds. Now, looking at the Morecambe versus Notts County game, uh, this was bottom versus top, as I said earlier. So Morecambe actually took the lead in the second minute and held on until the 79th minute. Morecambe's odds on CGM bet were 388 at the start of the game so they would have dropped significantly after that early goal and I personally would have been out probably about half an hour at the absolute maximum 
knowing that Notts County were a much stronger team uh, in the division. As you can see, Notts County w weren't actually top. They were close to the top prior to that game and Morecambe would have been rock bottom at the start of that game. So the fact that they took an early lead, then you can capitalise on the odds movement there and get out for a, a nice profit. Uh, say I'll, I'll be out at 20, 30 minutes at the very latest. And if we look at the Bromley versus MK Duns game, we can see MK Duns, who we've got a lay on at 2.19, took an early lead in that game. Um, so early on, we would have been up against it. But as we can see, Bromley did get an equaliser fairly quickly in the 23rd minute. Um, I think at that point, I, I would be tempted to just cash out because obviously the MK Duns um, were appearing strong. It's all about little and often, you know, Bromley, may well have gone on to win that game, but in all likelihood, um, MK Duns, you'd expect, would be the stronger team based on the odds uh, and based on the stats. So I think at that point, it would have been out. We'd have um, got, what, 23, 25 minutes of the game gone um, with MK Duns not winning. So there would have been some profit in that market. And going back to Friday night's game, we can see that uh, Plymouth, we've got either as a back bet or a lay on Luton. Uh, Plymouth actually took an early lead in this game, which would have given us a, a bit of profit early on. I'd have been tempted to stay in this a little bit longer due to Luton's poor away form since getting relegated at the end of last season. Uh, I don't think I'd have been in after half time, if I'm being honest. But we can see that um, Plymouth did go 2 0 up uh, before Luton pulled one back. So I'd have been out well before the second goal. But depending on your risk appetite, then you could have made a nice tidy profit in this game. So as you can see, staying in for the entire game when these teams are heavily odds against doesn't really work, but it does give, there is certainly value there for short term trades. If you can stay in when the underdog is keeping the score tied at nil-nil for example, then you can make some tidy profits on the time decay. Or if the underdog actually does take the lead, then, then you can maximize your profits. What we can also check with CGM Bet is we can just look at particular markets. So if you're only interested in the home team with value, we can filter that. Or if you want to potentially lay the home team, then we can also see that. Uh, we've looked at the match markets here, but the overs and unders as well. So if you want to look at, say, the two and a half goals markets, then in that time period, then there's only two games which would have been value in the over two and a half goals, uh, Arsenal and Leicester, which did have over two and a half goals, as did Millwall and Preston, which had four goals. So you would have got value for money on both of these. Now, I must keep emphasizing, just because the software is saying you're getting value, it does not mean that it's certain to win. All it is saying is that the odds that you are being offered is actually a better value than the calculated odds based on the data which CGM bet holds. So please do remember that. These are not tips. This is going to happen. It's just if it does happen, you'll be getting value. Hopefully this has shown how to use the Rating V module in CGM bet. It certainly hasn't told you how to trade because we made an overall loss, but we were always likely to because there was very little research got into it. Uh, we've just picked the games that CGM Bet had um, found for us and had a quick look at the odds in AGS, certainly for, for the games that, of mine. But we certainly wouldn't um, recommend that you, you trade every single game that comes up in here. Uh, do your research on the game, on the teams, and draw your own conclusions. And if you decide that you are going to trade on the game, then you know choose your window of opportunity wisely. Get in, get out according to your rules, and hopefully make a profit. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We've got many more in the pipeline uh, that are both educational and hopefully fun. And we'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye for now.